When Maria Victoria Hinao fell in love with Pablo Escobar, she had no idea of knowing that he would become the kingpin of the Medellin cartel in the future. According to Maria Victoria Hinao, she met the love of her life when she was just 12 years old. They had been together ever since. She described the 23-year-old man as affectionate, kind, and a gentleman which are hardly the first words that come to mind when thinking of the infamous cocaine baron Pablo Escobar, who was killed in a car crash in 1993. In this video, we will talk about what happened to Pablo Escobar's family. Let's start. Nonetheless, only a few years later in 1976, the young Hanao tied the knot with the considerably older Escobar. They were such a vast age gap apart and that her family disapproved didn't prevent them from being her Prince Charming. Hinao once remarked, he was a wonderful lover. His willingness to assist others, as well as his sympathy for their plight, won my heart. We take a road trip to regions where he envisioned establishing schools for the impoverished. His final relationship with Escobar lasted until his horrific murder in 1993. However, their relationship was fraught with difficulties, especially because she was not very interested in being his accomplice in crime. Hanau had grown to despise nearly everything about her husband's life by the time he died. The drug trafficking, the violence, and, above all, his numerous affairs with a slew of women. Maria Victoria Hanau has maintained that she had a genuine affection for Pablo Escobar up until this day. During their 17-year marriage, he also inflicted great sorrow on her and the entire country of Colombia with his actions. Maria Victoria Hanao, born in 1961 in Palmyra, Colombia, met Pablo Escobar, her future husband, when they were both relatively young. Her parents had expressed their disapproval of the couple's connection. They were wary of Escobar, the son of a watchman. He zipped through their neighborhood in his Vespa, a vehicle they considered unsafe. On the other hand, Hanau was convinced she had fallen in love. The author of Mrs. Escobar, My Life with Pablo, wrote, I met Pablo when I was 12 years old, and he was 23. When she met him for the first time, my first and only love was him, and he was the love of my life. According to Hanau, her future spouse put in a lot of effort to win her over. He lavished her with gifts, such as a yellow bicycle, and serenaded her with beautiful tunes throughout the evening. He made me feel like a fairy princess, and I was certain that he was my Prince Charming. She wrote in her letter to the magazine's editor. However, their courtship was anything but a fairy tale in the beginning. Hinao subsequently recalled that when her much older partner kissed her, she was paralyzed with dread. I was completely unprepared, she subsequently said. I didn't have the right tools to comprehend what that intimate and passionate contact meant to the other person. And when their relationship progressed to a sexual level, Hinao became pregnant at the age of 14. While the rest of the world rejoiced over Pablo Escobar's death, the drug lord's family, his wife, son, and daughter were mourning in silence and with great anxiety. As Colombian authorities raided Medellin and apprehended Pablo Escobar's cartel members, Maria Victoria Hernal and her two children packed up their belongings and escaped the city. In the aftermath of denials of refuge by Germany and Mozambique, the family eventually moved to Buenos Aires, Argentina. After that, the trio changed their names. Maria Victoria Hinao was known by the aliases Victoria Hinao Vallejos and Maria Isabel Santos Caballero and her given name. However, living in Argentina brought additional difficulties for Pablo Escobar's widow. On suspicion of money laundering, Maria Victoria Hinao and her son Juan Pablo were arrested and detained in 1999. They were both held for several months. Hanau stated in the press after her release that she had been suspended because of who she was rather than because of what she had claimed to have done. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and hit that subscribe button.
I am a political prisoner in Argentina because I am Colombian, she explained. They want to try the ghost of Pablo Escobar because they want to demonstrate to the world that Argentina is fighting drug trafficking, says the prosecutor. He now remained primarily out of the public eye for nearly two decades following her release. However, she has come out of the closet in recent years regarding her relationship with Escobar. In her autobiography, Mrs. Escobar, My Life with Pablo, she sheds light on her iconic husband and her enigmatic personality. Hinao finds it difficult to reconcile her feelings for Pablo Escobar with the horrific things he has done in the past. She expresses immense regret and shame for the immense pain my husband has caused. Not only for their family, but for the entire country of Colombia as a whole. Hinao openly apologized for her late husband's reign of terror in a 2018 interview with Colombia's W Radio broadcast worldwide. Her apology included the statement, I ask for forgiveness for what I did in my youth. She said that she was not a member of the cartel. I wasn't living a pleased life. Despite Escobar's multiple and ongoing affairs, Maria remained steadfast in her support of her husband's actions. Members of the Cali cartel even played back their recordings of her discussions with Pablo for their wives to demonstrate how a lady should act in such situations. Even though they wanted and received millions of dollars in reparations for Escobar's fight against them, this attitude proved to be the deciding factor in the cartel's decision not to kill her and her children after Pablo's passing. It was only until Hinao personally guaranteed him that he would neither seek retribution against the cartel nor join in the drug trade that she was able to successfully negotiate for his life. Unlike his father, Sebastian Marroquin is a vocal critic of his father's violent actions. In Argentina, the family eventually settled after fleeing first to Mozambique and then to Brazil. Hinao was a successful real estate businesswoman while operating under an assumed name. However, one of her business acquaintances learned her true identity and Hinao fled with her money. Because of the publicity surrounding her exposure as Escobar's wife, Hinao was sentenced to 18 months in prison while investigating her funds. Finally, officials could not link her funds to any unlawful activities, and she was allowed to return to her home. According to her son, Hinao fell in love with Escobar and married him as a result of his mischievous smile and the way he looked at her. He was affectionate and endearing to me, a wonderful lover. He would take road trips to regions where he envisioned establishing schools for the impoverished. Throughout the entire process, he was always a gentleman. Maria Victoria Hinao de Escobar, now known as Maria Isabel Santos Caballero, continues to live in Buenos Aires with her son and daughter, even though she has changed her name. According to the Argentine federal judge Nestor Baral, on June 5, 2018, she and her son, Sebastian Marroquin Santos, were charged with money laundering with two Colombian drug traffickers. The judge ordered the seizure of assets worth around $1 million each. Marroquin's efforts to seek forgiveness on his father's behalf from the sons of Rodrigo Lara, Colombia's justice minister who was assassinated in 1984, as well as for the sons of Luis Carlos Galán, a presidential candidate who was assassinated in 1989, are chronicled in the documentary Sins of My Father from 2019 by Argentinian filmmaker Nicolas Entel. The film premiered in the United States on HBO in October 2010 after screening at the 2010 Sundance Film Festival. Pablo Escobar, My Father, was published in 2014 by Marroquin under his given name Pablo Escobar. The book gives the author a personal account of the specifics of his father's life. It exposes the fundamentally destabilizing effect his father's death had on the family. Marroquin hoped to publish the book to correct any falsehoods about his father's adventures throughout the 1990s that had been made public. According to reports, Luz Maria Escobar, Pablo Escobar's sister, also made several gestures to make up for the drug lord's atrocities. The following are examples, making public statements in the newspaper, 
placing letters on the graves of his victims, and creating a public memorial for his victims on the 20th anniversary of his death. It was at the request of some of Escobar's relatives that his body was exhumed on October 28, 2006 to obtain a DNA sample to confirm the alleged paternity of an illegitimate child and to put an end to all the speculation about the identity of the body that had been buried next to his parents for 12 years. The airing of a video of the exhumation by RCN infuriated Marroquin, who accused his uncle, Roberto Escobar, and cousin Nicolas Escobar of acting as merchants of death by permitting the film to be shown on television. What do you think about this video? Tell us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.